So is there a, bl a blueprint? The, the, Do we the, have a clear blueprint? Or this is another political no, 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 talk no. shop? Let's, it's in the pipeline. You, you, let's, let's, let's wait uh, for PFG2. For for PFG There's going to be a tomato boom. That's, that's what I can say. Like many countries, Ghana's economy was badly hit following the COVID pandemic three years ago. The pandemic left in its wake job losses, uh, disruption to supply chain, and also rising food prices. Three years down the line, we discuss the consistent rising food prices in Ghana and whether or not there is light at the end of the tunnel. Today, my guest is someone who would know deeply what's happening with our agricultural sector. He's the deputy minister for a Greek in charge of crops. He's also a member of parliament and his name is Honorable Yaofrim Pong Ado. Sir, good evening and welcome to the show. Good evening. Today's been a very busy day for you. Yes, very, very busy. And you're telling me offset that you, you, you ad advocate for MPs to be MPs and, and ministers to be ministers. That's behind the scenes. <laughs> That's behind the scenes. <laughs> discussion. Okay. But it's quite, it's quite hectic combining the parliamentary work and, Good, and, and, and executive. You know, it's, it's something people have adv are advocated for. Yeah. Maybe it's a strain on the on the on the pairs. That's why yeah. the constitution believes that MPs. That way. But maybe as yeah. we grow as a country, yeah. that should we be looked at. Second look at it. I mean, yeah, seriously. Okay. Yeah, because um, uh, running around and uh, you know going to parliament, coming to the ministry, yeah. and all that. going to the constituency, Cons the constituency. You know that that is that that is the, the biggest of all the troubles. You yeah, know. but it's it's fun too at the same time. Right, you, you get to know a lot of people. You get to know a lot of institutions that make Ghana move around. You right. know. If I just only the MP, it's a bit difficult knowing a lot of yeah. things. Yeah. So, so it has we, its pros and cons. So it, it has its pros and cons. So you you see. Okay, see. let's talk about a Greek in the country. Right. Not long ago, um, people were complaining about rising food prices. Okay. The Greek ministry suggested that it was maybe profiteering that yeah. is causing that. And they used this ministry as, as a hub to sell, <laughs> to sell some uh, uh, farm produce. Yes. What happened to that project? Yes, uh, thank you so much. And uh, let me say hello to your cherished viewers. Right. And uh, to go straight to your answer, it is, it is about maybe the thousand time that yeah, answering that I'm question. answering this very question. You know, it was a stopgap measure that we took at that time. We were getting close to Christmas, and we all know what happened to the world. Uh, to Ghana, let me, let me be specific to okay. my country, Ghana. Between um, September, October, November 2022, I mean, it was hellish mm -hmm. in, in this country. Because on a daily basis, the, the city was, was going crazy, and it affected everything. Every aspect of life in this country uh, was affected. And food prices were hugely affected because of transportation and, and, and all that. And so uh, the cost of transportation, we, we needed to do something about okay. it. We saw a lot of these um, uh, food, food stops when we went around the country. Maize, when we went to the area, there was so much maize. We went to the western north and western region, Ashanti, so much plantain and all that. But the prices there were so cheap. The prices, well, in urban areas, the prices were crazy. So we decided to do something about it. The minister quickly organized this one. So we, we used to call it the, the PFG market. Yeah. You know. It got on so well. I mean, over here, if you, you came here at that time, you would see a lot of people here waiting for the truck to come you know, to buy and all that. Then we changed. Uh, we decided that no, we'll not do it here again. The institutions, the military, the police, yeah. prisons, all clamoring for these things. But it was for a short period and for a purpose. Okay. At least we stabilized prices at that time. Uh, but as you know, every time around this, this, this time of the year, 
our food prices are so high. Okay. And current inflation that we, as we are experiencing in this country, people are, it is obvious that food inflation is quite high. Yeah. And reason, uh, understandably so, because that has been the trend over the years. And but for the plenty of food and just maybe it would have been worse. Oh, really? It, it would have been worse. I'm telling you, because population has increased to 32 million now. Okay. And um, the land areas are the same. We're still using our um, smallholder farmers to do the farming for us. So okay. you can imagine what would have happened without the input support in terms of uh, improved seeds, fertilizers, and then as most as especially uh, extension services. Okay. We, we, if we are not coming with those interventions, I don't know what would have happened. Okay. We are still trying to review all those things and maybe when we get to, uh, when we formally launch our PFG2, you see the transformation from the smallholder farmer input support, that is subsidy support, to input credit okay. and, and, and the concentration on the commercial farming and all that. So uh, it's a matter of time and we will get there. All right, Honorable. So yeah. three years have passed since the COVID pandemic. I mean, in the beginning, everybody said it's supply chain, fertilizer, that sometimes you had to import. Yeah. What was the scale of the effect of the COVID pandemic on our agricultural sector? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, it's a bit mixed. Okay. Mixed in the sense that it was even in the COVID year that uh, we recorded um, about over 6% growth in agriculture okay. in this country. Um, the, the other side, the negative side, was the, the prices of the inputs. Because of the disruptions of the value chain, people were not producing and all that. Uh, there were no movements of even ships, uh, aeroplanes and all these things. So there was critical shortage of uh, the inputs. And you know, these are uh, functions of demand and supply. When the few are here and the demand is so high, the prices you know, skyrocket. Uh, so the budget, what we budgeted for in, uh, in the previous year to take care of inputs, um, during the year, we had about, uh, the prices were, were, de were, were raised to about uh, more, more, than, more than half, you see. The prices that the amount of money that we, we earmarked for our Greek was 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 raised so much, and then it affected. If if we were to get let's say thousand tons, we were, we were we were able to buy just about six hundred um, uh, metric tons, okay. and, and and that 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 meant that a lot of farmers did not get, um, or did not have access to inputs, critical inputs for the agriculture. And it's all because uh, we had good, we had some good harvest because the rain was good. Okay. You know the, the kind of farming we do in this country yeah. about rain-fed agriculture. Rain agriculture and this uh, smallholder farmers yeah. depends solely on, on rain-fed. You know the northern part of this country, they have only one uh, rainfall season. And the certain parts, we have double. Uh, so if the northern part, if the rains fail, it means there's going to be serious shortage of uh, food, especially the cereals. But in, in, the, in, the, in the regions from Bono, I have areas down south here, the second part of the year favored us because okay. we had very good rains and that's how we were not, uh, we did not experience the kind of uh, food situation that our, our neighbors in the Sahel zone experienced. So we had to share what, whatever we had here with them uh, at that time. So, so we're sharing with our neighbors? Oh yes, I mean maybe if, if nature, nature has a way of uh, balancing uh, the environment all the time. If maybe we had not had uh, PFJ, Plant of Food and Jobs, and also this, a country where we, we will have two seasons in, in, in planting. I don't know what would have happened to our neighbors, the Burkina Faso, Niger, and those countries. Because they, they had to rely on our cereals, especially in the northern uh, areas there. Even to the extent of smuggling of fertilizers and all that. Because um, we were subsidizing, 
Okay. And then some people were taking advantage of it and taking some across the borders. So it was a mixed feeling. We, we, got, we had, we had a good growth because the, the national growth was 0.9% or so okay. in the COVID year. But Greek did well, around 6%. So what do you say to critics who say that for a country that has invested so much mm -hmm. in, a pro in a program called PFJ, yeah. planting for food and jobs, yeah. we shouldn't have this, the sort of prices we have on our market ah, that we have? Yes. And that if the, the prices are the way they are, then mm -hmm. it means that the project or the program has failed. It is so easy for anybody to say, hey, uh, the prices are going up because um, of all the investment that you've made, we, we, we've not had that bumper harvest that we should have yes. you know, to bring them. But there are, several, there are several factors that make the prices uh, go up like that. So that's, that's why I initially said that they have their reasons for saying that. But I would say that maybe but for that huge investment in agriculture, mm. maybe, just maybe, we wouldn't have known where we would be uh, at this time. But you should be able to, 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 to quantify the impact of the, of the program oh, oh. On, on our economy. Oh, sure, sure, sure. That, that, I, I, I was talking about the, the GDP. If I die one alone, I mean, mm. we, we came to meet GDP so, so low, about 2.7 or so uh, percent. Okay. And we're growing, even, even last, was it last year, at a uh, food crops subsector, 8.1%. You understand, okay. but it's, it's, we, should, we should look at we should look at this thing in context. You know, we are we are trying to feed a population of 30, 32 million yeah. uh, through this smallholder farming. But for the inputs that we give them, there was no way they were, were going to even make the kind of production that we made. Really, I, I'm telling you for a fact because the, before the planting for food and jobs program, people were doing three three. I mean. Uh, three bags, five bags per acre mm. of maize. And now people do 12, 15, 20 bags per acre. Because of the improved seeds that uh, the, the ministry ensured that the farmers were giving, and then fertilizers. Mm. Most of our lands, especially the food basket, that is the northern, the savannah zone, most of our lands have been depleted of the nutrients, essential nutrients for crops to grow. So their fertilizers are sine qua non. They are essential, okay. yes, to have good yields. So, so if you don't supply these ones to them, there was no way we could have even made the, the tons that we, we made to feed ourselves. We've never uh, gone hungry. The prices began going up from the, the COVID time and then the Ukraine time. Mm -hmm. the, the prices were not like that at all. I mean, if you, if you follow, it says, I mean, latter part of last year, this year, that food inflation okay. has, has triggered uh, the up, up, upward trend of the, the national, national inflationary uh, okay. figures that we have. So, so we, we should count our, our blessings. I always say that, but for the PFG, I'm telling you, it, it, it would have been a bit worse. Okay. But now we, we, are, we know what, what, what has happened. That's why I said there's going to be some more paradigm shift from smallholder to commercial, medium co to large commercial farming. Okay. That's what we are going to see. Because if you want to feed this population and, and, and experience the kind of things we are talking about, that all year round prices must be stable for Greek products, then we need to up our game uh, moving from the, the one acre, two acre thing to 20, 30, 40, 500,000 acres. And a lot of private sector interest is coming in now seriously to do glass scale agriculture. And when we roll out this program, when we launch it, Everybody will, will see what we, are, what we are talking about. I don't want to take the win out of the sale right now. Because Maybe you should, you should never give us a sneak peek. But no. we'll go for our first break. When we return, we're still here with uh, Honorable Yafrim Pong Ado, who is also a member of parliament for Mansoum, Edubia, um, I think. Uh, yeah. And he, he will give us an insight into whether or not, for you, the ordinary Ghanaian, prices of foodstuffs would reduce in the next couple of weeks or months or years. 
uh, ahead of us. My name is Daniel Odo. This is the Lord and we're back after this break. Everyone needs the perfect snack to munch on during a fun moment. Wow. Enjoy the tasty McBerry Twist Cupcakes, wow. deliciously baked and packaged for a sweet treat. Mm. Premium quality cakes baked with love for all, enriched in butter and milk. Mm, yummy. Oh, McBerry Twist Cupcakes, simply irresistible. Try one today. This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back from the break. This is still the Lowdown on Ghana Web TV. My name is Daniel Ojo. We're having a conversation that uh, will be of interest to you. The prices of foodstuffs in the country and the general prices of goods and services. But predominantly, food inflation has gone up uh, astronomically in the last couple of months and years. And the government attributed to the COVID pandemic and also the Russia-Ukraine war. The critics of the government say for a flagship program like the Planting for Food and Jobs, we should not have the excuses and the prices that we have on the market. My guest is the Honourable uh, Minister of Parliament. is also a Deputy Minister of Agriculture in charge of crops, uh, Yao Frimpong Ado. Uh, you, you, you talk about the fact that for the crop sector we've done, we've done well. For the ordinary Ghanaian, they just want to have some assurance that the prices of foodstuffs will come down because look, it's increased 100 folds, 200 yeah. folds. Is there a strategy yeah. to ensure that this thing would reverse? Yeah, uh, first of all, let me, let me make this correction. Right. See, uh, normally between February, March, April, May, June, okay. July, uh, there are hard times in this country. I mean, since I was a little boy, prices of first halves increase because there's, there's some semblance of shortage here and there, and prices are always going high. But if it started from this your, when you were a young boy, shouldn't, yeah. shouldn't we have a strategy to? Uh -huh, that's to fix what I'm it. talking about. You see, it comes to where I'm getting to. Okay. You see, we need to have, as a country, yes. we need to invest so much in irrigation. 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 Okay. So we can do all year round agriculture. The irrigation, but, they, they say the Galamse people are destroying the, 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 the land. No, the, the, the Galamse people, where irrigation does well, is the savanna zone there? We don't have, we don't have the, galamsey. the galamsey, yes. Okay. So, for example, a place like a Accra, Accra place, yeah, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good area to do irrigation, irrigation. from Kintampo right down to uh, Boku to Hamile, yeah, you know, Paga, Navrongo areas. These, these are very good lands, and as we speak right now, people are doing a lot of large scale farming in the upper west region, especially. Uh, what, what. What we have been experiencing because of the, uh, the seasonal nature of our farms, uh, of our agri agri agriculture, is, is that around this time when people are cropping, mm -hmm. it becomes difficult. Food, there's some loss of food shortage. And because of that, prices go up. Mm -hmm. And if you were a, a, a Nakan, mm -hmm. July, the name for, for July in Akan is Kitawansa. And it's not for nothing that our uh, great 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 grandfathers uh, named that month Kitawansa. Why, why did they do that? It's because of our seasons. So, this the, the period that they will be planting. There's almost nothing when you went to the villages. Around that time, there's nothing. I thought it was just that if you have some money, you just hold on tightly to no. it. No. It's not that. Like, yeah, we hold it tight because very soon, because the next month, the, 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 if a harvesting of the new crop begins in certain areas in July. Okay. So very soon, your suffering will be over. Okay. That's how come you have the kita Why so does it relate to agriculture? Yes. So what I'm saying is that because we have not transited so well from um, this weather, mother nature mm -hmm. determining what we grow and all that, mm -hmm. to um, all year round agriculture, which is um, irrigation. Yeah. Because we have not transited. Well. I'm not saying we don't have irrigation schemes. We have a lot 
quite a lot of irrigation schemes, but their capacities cannot actually feed this country. Is that not what the one district one dam was supposed to do? Look, those those ones the within certain parameters and diameters they can they can do. But yeah, I'm talking about we need the thousand so the, acres. The, 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 the type of irrigation you're talking about is yeah, the thousand the thousand acres farm. We cannot. What would it take for us it. to do that? Oh, we need to. We know we have a lot of water bodies in this country, yes. especially up north. There, we have a lot, a lot of water bodies, but they dry up so fast. Okay. So we need to have some uh, dams uh, 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 across these rivers and the water bodies. We need we need to uh, impound water during uh, the time that it's raining and all these waters mm -hmm. uh, go waste. Mm -hmm. Either they go underground or they go into the sea. We need to impound some of them through technology, yeah. and then we use this water during the dry season, that's irrigation. Yes. So the new direction, there's so much uh, attention towards that. Towards irrigation. Yes, ex exactly. We, we want to open up certain areas in this country where there's water, okay. but because of certain logistic challenges, like the front plains, yeah. look, they can feed this country, feed West Africa, front plains alone. You know, but it needs a lot of uh, investment, infrastructure investment. So the, the, the ministry is going to leverage on um, the private sector support in this direction. Just, we just give them the support in the private sector because we need the private sector capital to also come into a great... And in the private sector uh, coming into a great, the bottom line is profit. So you have to assure the private sector person that when he comes into, let's say, maize or soya or whatever production, he's going to make his money. But he needs, he needs to be convinced. So you need to, certain infrastructure government will have to put in, the private sector will come in. And then eventually it will be private sector driven. The smallholder farmers, you have to, government will have to take care of them in a way. But we need to encourage more of the, the commercial farmers. Yeah. Yes, they, they can give us the buffer stock. See, it has been like this because the buffer stock hasn't got the capacity to mop up all the produce that we get at the end of every year, mm -hmm. and then store so that they release them at a time you know when they are, we are farming, yeah. so that they will stabilize prices. That has been something that uh, has been a, a challenge for this country. So and is there a, bl a blueprint? So the, the, do we the, have a clear blueprint, or this is another political no, 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 no. talk shop? Let's, it's in the pipeline. You, you let's 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 wait uh, for PFG for, two for PFG two, and you see. Uh, just of what I'm talking about. I mean, so PFG two is coming when? Um, as I indicated earlier, uh, we gave ourselves first week, first two weeks in July. Mm. It has to be launched. Okay. Yes, we are we are going to have it done. Uh, and you see, we th there's so much potential for agriculture in this country. Look, if you take only uh, rice within the value chain of rice. The employment that can be generated, you have no idea. Tomatoes. Yeah. And that's exactly, that we are looking at these 11 crops that have been selected, and that is going to be the game changer what, what, in what livestock. Tomatoes. Oh, you, you get you get to know about at least tomato is in there. Okay. The, so the, 11, those, 11 game yeah, changing. Yeah, those crops that we spend so much money in importing. Important. Because over the years, we have been self sufficient in uh, maize production. Uh, we have deficit, huge deficit in rice production, huge deficit in tomato, but we have uh, self-sufficiency in soya, we have self-sufficiency in the, in the roots, especially cassava and plantain, sorry, uh, uh, yam, cassava and yam. We, we, we have been producing so much of that that we need to go into processing of this. So those, the sorghum and all those people that are uh, companies like um, um, Ghana Brewery and all those people, they need those and maize so that um, we, the farmers can expand their farms and all that. We've been producing, but it's not enough. Okay. You know? So these are the, the crops that we've targeted that we are going to ensure that there's, there's a revolution in, in the uh, production or cultivation of these crops, so we we can we can have a secured country as far as food is concerned. Okay. That's At this point, how would you rate our food sufficiency um, in terms of uh, percentage from one to a hundred? Are we I, I, I food self-sufficient? Yeah, I, I would say that we are we are 
self-sufficient because apart from, as I indicated, apart from uh, uh, rice mm. and tomatoes, I find these are the two major crops that we so import we heavily. A lot of rice in this we country. consume a lot. In fact, the deficit we 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 we, we produce around. 600,000 metric tons, but we, our consumption is between 1.2, 1.4 million metric tons. So there's a huge gap. And there are several private sector initiatives that would complementing what we are going to do, I'm sure, uh, we're giving us maybe three, by three years. So uh, 78% food sufficient, do you think? Yeah, I, I can say so. You need this country, the, a lot of the areas, we grow the food that we eat. Uh, uh, sorry, we eat the food that we grow. Um, for example, in the forest belt, the yams and the cassava and this, they are there. Okay. You, are, you know. But when we talk of the rice, that has been a problem. But rice has become food for every part of this country. So whether you are from the north or you are from the south, especially for the youth, now the, the main thing is rice. rice. That's why the attention must go there. But because the rice Especially, uh, there's this crop that we, we are doing just between uh, 15 and, and, and 20 percent, you see, and that is not good. Okay. That is not good at all. We need to up our game and cross the 50 percent line. If I may, uh, uh, we used to do 50 percent in rice, but because demand is increasing all the time, that's why we are going down around 40 something. But uh, the plans that we are going to put in place. We are going to make up for all the short tomatoes things. are very expensive now, and everybody says you are important from Burkina Faso. But yeah. Burkina Faso, Burkina Faso is, mm -hmm. is, it doesn't have any grains. They are, yeah. well, they they have, are a landlocked country. No, you see, it depends on how you look at it. I wish, how are they able to provide and produce so much tomato? Yes, yeah, you see, Ghana, we talk, we talk, we talk in this country. We people follow talk, you, the politician. You, the no, politician no, talk people talk about GMOs and all that. Look, okay. within, the, within the tomatoes there, uh, uh, the, uh, the normal tomatoes yeah, that we grow. Yeah, but the, 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 it's, it's not a crime to consume GMO. The kind of foods they bring in here, I mean, there's this canned tomato sentence, you know how they cultivate them. Uh, so the, the kind of tomatoes, that meaty tomatoes that we, we see over there, you produce some, you let people come and see how you produce them, uh, even the seasons and all that, and you see the noise that people will make. Don't they just want the tomatoes and the prices? Ah, to come that's that's where the problem. Doesn't is. the end justify the means? Sure, but we we we're going to have. There's going to be a tomato boom. That's that's what I can say. Really? I mean, oh yeah. How yeah. soon? People are coming. Oh, we see. These are uh, we call it what short cycle uh, uh, crops. Mm. For example, tomato, three four months you'll yeah. be harvesting. So if investors are coming in and they are taking up the lands, immediately the next crop is uh, around maybe four, five months. I cannot talk about it, but subsequently, no yeah, because that's that they are now uh, developing their lands, and I'm sure if I tell you that next three months we're going to have that, you know. But we still have enclaves in this country where they grow tomatoes. Uh, on the Sichuari Road, that enclave there, they grow lots of tomatoes. When you are going to uh, uh, Sugakope, those areas, they grow lots of tomatoes. Akumadan, um, so we, uh, they, we, we are doing a lot of greenhouse tomato production in uh, Bojasi and uh, Dawenya mm. and then and Akumadan. These are the Akumadan. is it's an area that they grow lots of tomatoes. Uh, Tobodong areas. Afram Plains, some sections of Afram Plains, they grow lots of tomatoes. But you see, we haven't given them uh, the, the, the necessary support, support so that people will expand from their two acre, three acre farm to let's say commercial. five, ten acres. Exactly. That's why the emphasis is going to be on commercial farming. But we've Not, been seeing commercial Honorable. We've been seeing commercial farming for many years. So you, you wait and see this one too. We're going to hold you to that. Sure. I mean, because uh, what we are going to go out, uh, the emphasis seriously is going to be on commercial, commercial farming. farming. Yes. Finally, before we go, uh, before I, I, I speak about your, your constituents, <laughs> one of the things you mentioned was transport costs, which yeah. is a cost input in, in the price build up of, 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 of food crops. Yes, yes. 
again, critics, and not just your government, yeah. previous government right. from when we gained independence, yeah. about the road network or yes. the real way to yeah. bring the farm yeah. produce to the urban centers. Right. We've paid lip service to it. Yeah. We still have not done the infrastructure that yeah. makes it easier to bring the farm produce. Yeah, you see, the, the challenges are many. But that does not mean uh, attempts have not been made to solve some of these problems. With road infrastructure, you all know it's quite expensive, okay. road infrastructure. But the farm trucks, uh, to make the farm trucks more trouble, and uh, also the feeder roads, uh, a, lot, a lot is being done. And I'm sure uh, in the next few years, I wouldn't say the next few months, next few years we will see uh, the full benefits of this infrastructure thing I'm talking you about. You lobby the, the, the um, roads ministry, ministry to, to we, construct we, some of these? Yeah, we, we, we work in tandem with them. Uh, you know, selected roads are sent to them you know, to give priority and all that. So that is, that is there. But the, the one most important aspect of it is, uh, you see, when we have bumper in the hinterlands and transporters, also relies solely on the market price of fuel, fuel without considering some other factors. This problem, perennial problem, is not going to go away. Because when we did the, the farmers' markets mm -hmm. in l l l the last part of November and December last year, we realized that some trucks were prepared to go and bring this in at a certain reduced cost. Mm -hmm. You understand? So we, we, we all need to see, to see to this responsibility that it is, it is our country that we are building. But when, when, when the fuel prices went to 23 cities per liter and prices jumped to that level, uh, uh, transport fares jumped to that level, mm -hmm. Now it, it is down. about half. Mm -hmm. they, still have, they still have not done anything about it. I mean, some, some minimal, minimal reduction. So you also no, agree with the, with the greed and profiteering of our, of our market? I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it greed or profiteering. Every, every private sector person wants money. Maybe excessive we, profit. Yeah. Are, yeah, excessive profit. But we should be a bit patriotic when we are, when we are dealing with food that people eat. We should, you know, when, when, when they come together to reduce prices, not but I mean, reduce the bare bottom, no, but at least something that will make you make some, some margin, you see, a small margin. It's not every time that you need to, you need to have big margins. Small margin at critical moments in, in your business, it's okay, so that the next, uh, when, when there's good time and you're making good profit, nobody will complain. But not when things are so critical and people, people just bought whatever you sent to us because uh, everything had gone up. The thing had come down about halfway. You see, there are some places that I buy for well, 11 cities. But we used to buy it at 23 cities. Mm. So it's more, even more than half, you see. And still, I mean, we still have fares so high, the market two men are crying. So they also come. So some people are not being patriotic, eh? Oh, I, 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 I believe so too. I believe so. I mean, uh, uh, it is just a passionate appeal to transporters okay. so that we wouldn't put all the blame on them because uh, there are several factors that account for right. the high, high, high prices of foodstuffs, especially the seasonal one. Because once we begin the, the harvesting of the new crop, now that the new yams have come, you go and ask of the, the prices of the old yam. It will not be the same level as the new they, were, they were selling it before okay. the new yams came. And the new yams, they are now coming. Um, and as they, they flood the markets, I am pretty sure the prices may not go down so much because of prevailing uh, circumstances all around the world. But at least it will not, it will not be that high or it, it will not be even at this current level. Okay. Because if you, don't, if you don't sell them, they will get rotten. Okay. So, and then maize, the same thing. Once harvesting begins, prices stabilize. And in some cases, they, they, they reduce. The only thing left for us to do is to mop up when we have bumper. bumper. Is to mop up, that we have the capacity to mop up uh, the, our silos. You know, we need to have more silos, we need to have more warehousing, mm -hmm. you know, we need to have more processing facilities so we can mop up the, the okay. surpluses. Okay. 
to stabilize prices anyway, during the hard time. Thank you, Honorable. Thank I'm, you. I'm thank also, you for having I'm, us. I'm and also, all the best. I'm also grateful. Tell it. My name is Daniel Ojo. This is uh, another edition of The Lowdown. We've been having a conversation with the Deputy Agrit Minister in charge of crops, Honorable Yao Fimpong Ado. And he's promised that there will be bumper harvest and there will be commercial farming in Ghana in the next couple of months. So yeah. we're going to keep uh, him to his word yeah. and maybe come back the first half of the year and see what is happening. Um, that, that's next year and yeah. see what's happening that's with the right. agricultural sector. Right. We'll come away another time with another edition until then. It's bye for now. Mm -hmm.